G'day, my name's Mike Callender. I've been a DJ since 2001 in Melbourne and around the world. And today I'm at the iconic Melbourne clubbing institution, Revolver. Hope you can join me for a little bit of a look at the Model 1 mixer. Cool? Yeah. Okay, so now that I've had a bit of a mix and a bit of a jam with this mixer, let's talk about what actually happened. So on channel two here, uh, one of the six channels on the Model 1, I had a CDJ connected and on that I had one of my own tracks and it got to a breakdown section and I wanted to turn that into a kind of a bed that I could um, sort of sit uh, comfortably so that I could bring in my drum machine over the top. So to make that work, I needed to uh, make use of some of the features on this channel too, which are on every channel. Um, I did a little bit of filtering. There's a low pass filter and a high pass filter uh, on every channel, which is kind of unusual for a DJ mixer. You might find that they have a three or four band EQ section and a, a separate filter, but the, the filter would be a lot less flexible. In this case, there are two filters per channel, which uh, makes it really nice for kind of dialing in exactly the frequency that you're after. And because I was in a breakdown, I really needed to give the track a little bit of a kind of a, a boost. So instead of just using the trim dial, which I could have used and turning it right up, I actually reached for the drive circuit, which is just sitting it's a small dial just next to the trim and just above the low pass filter. Uh, when it's plugged in and you're sending a signal to it, it actually lights up to show you the, you know, a signal there and how, how much it's being driven. So I drove that a little bit to give us a bit of body for the breakdown. And then uh, I went up to the auxiliary section up the top here. There are two auxiliary send dials per channel and I just use one of those, I dialed that right up and that comes out of a couple of connections out of the back and then what, that went over to my delay pedal and I had a really kind of an aggressive um, bunch of settings dialed into that, I had a lot of feedback and so that signal um, over on the delay came back via a return channel, you'll find that there's two return channels on this mixer here um, this is a, a trim and drive dial, 
so you can really dial in something very, very crunchy and kind of aggressive if you like. You can also um, monitor that in your headphones if you wish, how crunchy it is, but um, I didn't need to do that in this instance. And then there's kind of a volume control, kind of like a fader volume on the channels. So there's one of those on each of the returns. And then very importantly, I engaged the return one and two low cut button, which basically chops off um, the, that really angry low end content that you might find, especially on a big feedback um, delay effect um, that could really muddy up my mix. So I dialed that in, that cut off the bottom. And then I also moved further down uh, this section and there's a button to engage here to send the return one and two to the master filter. So I mentioned that there's a high and low pass filter on each channel. There's also a master filter that can be applied across everything if you wish or it's got an assignable section here. So on each of these channels, I can actually dial in whether or not that uh, signal is going to go through this filter. So in the, the case of the demo that I just did, I didn't actually engage those on the channels, but I used this master filter as a kind of an effects filter. So that's got another um, low pass and high pass dial. You can see there's a little, um, signal here to tell us where we're at flat. So if I um, had them both at flat, I wouldn't hear the effect of the filter. Um, I've also got to engage the filter here with this button down below. And I've got a resonance on the high pass section. So it can give a bit of a spike at the cutoff point. So when I sweep it, you can really hear the movement of the filter. So um, I found a kind of a little musical pocket for that fed back returned um, delay from channel two, and I sort of adjusted the EQs and the, uh, or sorry, the filter section until I was satisfied that it would be a nice um, bed upon which I could add another channel. And that's where I brought in my drum machine. Um, it was the TR8. And on that I had, from that I had everything um, summed at the machine and it just came via a stereo input into channel one. So using a drum machine that way is pretty common in the DJ context. Um, what's interesting with this mixer is that it allows me with this sweepable EQ section in the middle, I can really cut or boost a section if I'm using uh, an instrument alongside mastered music Often you might find in the traditional context of hybrid live DJ sets that you, you know, you, your instruments just aren't sounding tough enough or um, loud enough next to a mastered track. But what this allows me to do, and in this case what I did was I um, dialed this, sorry, this one, I dialed this uh, sweepable frequency down to 70 hertz, and then I cranked the boost value on that so um, when, it, when you hear that bottom end kick in, it's, it's eight, uh, eight decibels of absolute um, power at the bottom end. So um, it feels really nice and it's so nice to be able to do that with an instrument like a drum machine that hasn't had a mastered signal. And I can also um, you know, use the filters and, and engage all of the, the features of each channel as I'm going to. Once I had that in, I did actually go over to this filter assignment and just to see what happened, I um, engaged that and that sent the signal from here over um, via this filter and it, um, you know, just using it as kind of a creative effect to kind of accentuate the end of a bar or something like that. So uh, with those features all together, that's kind of how I imagine you could attack a complete six channel mix. You might have uh, three CDJs or three turntables or a combination of those. And then uh, in my instance, I might have a drum machine, maybe um, a go-to synthesizer and maybe a modular synth. And amongst all of that, I can also have my return, uh, my auxiliary sends and returns, which I would use for effects. But you can also, if you wish, just use these returns as inputs. So you've basically got six stereo channels here and two additional channels 
through which you can send lots of audio. So um, in addition to what I showed in the demo, there's a few other things that are worth exploring and having a look at. Um, one of the main features, if you're into um, something with this many channels, you might also be into the idea of, um, you know, back-to-back -back DJ sets or versus DJ sets where two different DJs could take control of, say, three channels at a time. So if you and a friend, um, if, if this was me and this was my buddy, uh, both DJing together, the first thing you would probably need to do is have some kind of um, headphone splitter so that you could both be queuing tracks at the same time. With this mixer, you've actually got two dedicated um, queue sections so that you could each have your own mix. So you've got these buttons along the top of each channel and you'll see them marked A and B and that allows you to say, um, you know, send, uh, look at uh, QB, and so if we hit B for each of those, we'll get the signal that we're listen, uh, looking to listen to over there, and if your DJ buddy or collaborator of some kind wanted to do the opposite, they could use QA. You'll also note that out of each of those Q sections, there are multiple jacks, so there's a, a mini jack and a quarter inch jack there on each of those. As well as that, you've got a, uh, an EQ section for the master. So in addition to the master filter, there's also a master EQ on the other side. You can engage that as you wish. I imagine that kind of style of um, uh, engaging the master, you know, you might want to do something really drastic and rip out all the bass um, and then bring it back for some vibe. It's kind of, um, it reminds me of that style of rotary mixer that didn't even have any EQs or filters on the channel and it would just have it on the master. And because this is a completely analog signal path, um, if you wanna make this really simple and forget about half of the things that I've told you, you can really just use this thing for how good it sounds, you know? You can, um, the master filter, master filter and master EQ section are really nice sounding and the analog signal path along with the drive circuit means that you've got something that can really, it can be really versatile in a musical way rather than in a technological way. So it's quite an interesting setup. Um, and finally, in terms of um, the, the face of the mixer, there is an EQ section on the monitor or booth output. So one of the things I've noticed from many years of DJing, nearly two decades, is that you can get into all these different DJ booths and no matter which mixer you've got and how good it sounds, the way that it's set up, you might wanna really roll off um, some top or some bottom end from your monitor mix. You want everyone out in the crowd to have the kind of the full power of uh, you know, the full track, but you might be ab getting absolutely blasted by um, high end frequencies. And this allows you an opportunity to dial that out um, as much as you like and still have a really nice full mix coming through the PA. So I think that's quite a, quite a good feature. So let me flip it around <clears throat> and on the back, there's a range of connections that are worth exploring. One of them is this, um, there's these ones called D sub. So there's two inputs and one output um, for the D sub. And um, what that allows you to do is you can go and um, basically with one connection, you can connect multiple channels of audio into the mixer. So if you're in a situation where this was the house mixer at a club and you wanted to set up a laptop live set, you might uh, make it really easy for yourself. Um, I'm just going to reach over here off camera and grab one of these D sub connections and a sound card just to demonstrate. So at one end of this, I might, so this is my, my portable sound card. If I went and plugged into each of the outputs like this, so you can see that this, um, this snake or loom has at one end eight TRS connections. So once I'm plugged in at that end, so I could do this outside the DJ booth and not be interfering with anyone 
in the DJ booth, so if there was someone else DJing, and then at the other end, I can go over and plug into my T-sub in and just wind this in, just so it um, stays stable. And with that, I have instant access to multiple channels across this mixer. So it allows me to send, I could have, um, you know, four stereo tracks or, um, you know, which would be kind of the limit of this sound card, but you could have two sound cards and two D sub inputs and access pretty much every channel on this thing. So you've got six stereo channels and the return channels are all accessible via these D subs. If you open up the manual for the Model 1, you'll find um, how the assignments are routed. It's pretty easy to um, get the hang of. So that's something, that's a new feature on this mixer that it's not something I've seen before and it's something I'm definitely going to put into use. What's also good about that is if you could imagine, if you're not all about the laptop live thing um, and you didn't want to use this say as a controller for that situation, you could also use this in the studio and you could have these connections happening um, with multiple channels routed to this mixer and this could be actually a stage of analog summing. So imagine you've got something mixed in the box and you send the whole thing over here and imagine on every channel you've got an analog set of dual filters, an amazing sounding EQ and a drive circuit over here. That means that on every channel you can kind of um, get your mix happening. Also on the back is another connection. Um, this smaller one, I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, there's a link in and link out connection. If you're fortunate enough to have two of these mixes, um, which I would love to have, or you've got a friend who's got one, or you've got access to borrow one, you can also connect these up for some kind of epic DJ battle scenario. So you could have each DJ or performer with six channels. Or if you're in the studio context, you could have 12 stereo channels of audio um, in one kind of complete connection. So all you need to do is engage a little pin on the bottom and you can assign the summed parts of each mixer to one kind of master section. So it becomes really simple just with that um, small connection. And that to me sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. So hopefully that's a pretty good run through of the Model 1. I might turn it around so you can see it in all its glory one last time. Um, it's definitely been something that I found really kind of revolutionary in terms of how I want to use a DJ mixer and how I can see myself carrying a DJ mixer to my gigs and using it in the studio and really putting it through its paces in multiple applications. So hopefully you'll get a chance to get your hands on one and have a look at it in the flesh. Thanks a lot.